Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I have no disclosures. The force system from Philips uses fiber optic light waves that allow us to know the position in space of catheters and wires without the use of radiation. This can be combined with road mapping using CT, DSA, or acquired X-ray images. See how the system tracks the movement of the force guide wire in real time without radiation. Here, two fluoro snapshot angles serve as a roadmap, making EVAR gate cannulation relatively simple. The force system even allows us to see the catheter and wire when they are outside the field of view of the X-ray beam. Here, Joost von Herwarden used a viewing angle of almost 90 degrees of caudal to make cannulation of this tortuous iliac easier and safer. This is obviously a view that's not feasible with standard fluoro. Here, Tilo Kobel is using the force system to cannulate a fenestration and the SMA. The force system correctly identifies which portion of the wire or catheter is in front of the other, making unwrapping easier and safer. The current system has the force guide wire and the force catheter, which is either a Berenstein or Cobra II in 80 centimeter lengths. The wire and catheter are connected to the base, which is attached to the table. A simple registration procedure shows the system where the wire is in space relative to the table via the docking base. However, there are situations where an 80 centimeter Berenstein or C2 may not be sufficient or may not be your preferred catheter for cannulation. The next step forward will be the force 3D hub, which is catheter agnostic, in order to expand the capabilities to almost all catheters. This allows the user to employ their catheter of choice, which may include several catheters depending on the anatomy and the device type. The, the force 3D hub shown in the center is attached to the catheter and the force guide wire is introduced, then the catheter is registered. Each catheter has a specific length, which is confirmed by pushing the wire to the tip of the catheter for registration. The force 3D hub knows its position on the wire, so the distance to the tip of the catheter is now known, and it knows that it must follow the position of the wire. Here, we select a new catheter, in this case, a Vanshi 4. The wire is introduced to the tip of the catheter, the position is confirmed, and it's ready to use. Here we use the Vanshi 4 to cannulate the SMA. The 3D hub does not interfere with normal catheter manipulation. If the wire is withdrawn into the catheter, the system will estimate the position of the tip, which is displayed as a dashed line. If the wire is withdrawn more than 7.5 centimeters, it will no longer estimate the position until the wire is readvanced. Here is cannulation of a renal artery in a pig using a DSA image as a roadmap. The catheter and wire are visualized much better than with a standard roadmap image using fluoro. The colors stand out and are in the foreground relative to the roadmap images. Many of us now routinely use steerable sheaths for fenestrated and branched EVAR. So we wanted to see how user-friendly the Force 3D hub is with steerable sheaths. Here we cannulate the right renal, the most difficult vessel in this model, using the deflecting tip sheath with a Compi catheter placed at the tip of the sheath and then advance the wire and catheter. We then cannulated the SMA in a similar fashion, followed by the left renal, hepatic, and splenic arteries, all of which were cannulated with relative ease. This combination also made it easy to cannulate the left gastric, the IMA, both lumbars, and up and over into the external and internal iliacs. To loosely quote Obi-Wan Kenobi, use the force, Luke, reach out with your fiber optics. And Luke's rebel colleague, he switched off his radiation navigation system, sir. Thank you very much for your attention and may the force be with you. Well, if I may say so, the, 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 uh, before we discuss Mark and Gustavo and Bijan, <clears throat> the reason this is put at the end of the program 
is to coincide with Phillips, who are going to have the, the Chan Cross first meet the expert session. And you, Mark, are going to be the chairman of that. And immediately follows on this channel. And so um, I'm delighted to say that's going to be about fiber optic technology, panel of users and experts to discuss the latest clinical experience, 3D catheter agnostic guidance, which will have Tilo Kerbal, Gert Schoenink, Joost van Herwarden, Andreas Schanzer, there you are, and yourself. So we have a little time, but I strongly recommend those interested in image guidance to stay and see all this happening immediately after this discussion. Mark, what would you like to say to us about that? Uh, well, I think that having you know that panel uh, with the experience that they've had uh, using these devices in humans will be uh, incredibly enlightening. I personally think that this is a disruptive technology that's going to change the way we do things and uh, impact our patients uh, in a big way. Disruptive, i.e. do you welcome it or you hate it? <laughs> I welcome it. I'm looking forward to getting a little less hot when I'm. It's saying, an interesting uh, way of using the word disruption. Good. I see <laughs> what you mean. There are some people who say that only a certain number of brilliant surgeons can do these operations at the moment, but this image guidance is going to make it possible for normal people to be able to do it. Uh, that will be disruptive. Um, so. Phillips is to be congratulated, I think, on this amazing. Uh, breakthrough. Um, and I don't hold shares in Philips. Um, I think that um, uh, it should be a very good session that's going to follow and very, very different from anything we've been used to up until this point. Gustavo, Bijan, what do you have to say about this? I think this is impressive, Mark, and thanks for sharing with us all the, the different things that you're using and that are coming up the pipeline. You know, the uh, <clears throat> I mean, this is just going to be addressing a major area of need that we have, which is the ability to look at the anatomy on any view we want without yeah. being radiated. Yeah. It's both a reduction of radiation and an ease of uh, technical uh, success, isn't it, Gustavo? Yes, yes. And uh, there will be a time that, on, you know, not only the catheter and the wire, but everything will be, will be compatible with this technology. and. Yeah. And, and that I think radiation is going to be a, something of the past. <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> thing to be able to say. Now, so I, hope no, the, no, I... <clears throat> I hope those people who are writing the headlines for tomorrow's vascular news, interventional news, and so on, got that. Would you say that again, Gustavo? <laughs> radiation is going to be a thing of the past. Did I hear you say radiation that? Radiation will be a thing of the past. <laughs> there you go. I hope I, I, I am not retired by the time we get to that goal. <laughs> Well, if we did nothing else today to get to that point by the end of the day, <laughs> that takes some doing. I must say, I, I'm sorry, guys, but I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed listening to you talk, and uh, it's been a total delight. I have to say that I wish you were all here in the spring and we could meet together. Of course I do, face to face. But the performance and the education has gone to thousands and thousands of people to the Pan America, uh, Middle America, Latin America, uh, Asia Pacific, even thousands into China. So you're being watched and um, anyone can watch this because you're, I've got to say guys, you've been mighty good. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. That's the end of Thank the you. session. And Thank now you. we have the Meet the Experts with Phillips. Take it away, Mark, go and show us how to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you.